morning. In 1992, Ross Perot's running mate, Admiral James Stockdale, began the opening statement of his vice presidential debate by saying, who am I? Why am I here? And it was not an effective opening line because in the moment it seemed like he didn't know who he was or why he was there. Compared to the ancients, whose identity was found in their tribe and whose job was to do whatever their parents had done, Western culture is obsessed with personal identity. Parents pray that their children figure out the answers to these questions before they are 40. Adults seem to continually reconfront these questions at midlife, at retirement, or after an illness. We never stop wondering what we should do with our lives. Do you know who you are? Do you have a plan for your life? Do you know where you are going? Billy Graham famously told the story of Albert Einstein losing his train ticket. And when the steward approached uh, Professor Einstein and asked him for his ticket, the physicist became very uncomfortable and he began to frantically search through all of his pockets and then his luggage. The steward said, it's okay, Dr. Einstein. I can see your name on the list and all of us know who you are. Don't worry about it. Thank you, he said. But as the steward went to check other tickets, Einstein continued to frantically search for his ticket. And finally, the young steward approached him again, and he said, please relax, relax, Dr. Einstein. We all know who you are. And he said, young man, it's very nice that you know who I am. I would like to know where I'm going. If you've traveled a lot, you know what he's talking about. Well, when I got to college, I was amazed by my fellow students who knew what they wanted to do with their lives. And of course, I had no idea. I pretended like I did. It terrified me to face the truth that I wasn't sure if I would ever figure this out. I thought my best self will be lost. I'll never be successful if I don't figure this out. And a lot of us feel that way. In the Gospels, we're confronted by a man who knows who he is, where he's going. And that's an attractive attribute in a leader. And on Palm Sunday, we see the results. It seems like his assurance has paid off with his royal procession into Jerusalem. The donkey is not an accidental image. David rode triumphantly into Jerusalem on a donkey to be crowned king. The day is not accidental. Many historians suggest that maybe even on this exact day, as Jesus is riding into town on one end of town, Pilate was riding in on the other end of town. Jesus, with impoverished common people, palm branches, and a donkey, Pilate on war horses, ahead of soldiers and with chariots and spears. Nobody missed the intentionally provocative nature of these messages Jesus was sending. Everyone got it. But then, it seems, he goes a step too far. He cleanses the temple. He rebukes the scribes and the Pharisees who control the temple. He drives out the money changers. And now it's not just the Romans that want him dead. The Jewish, Jewish powers that be begin to push back as hard as they can. And it seems for a moment that he was wrong. He didn't know who he was. He didn't know where he was going. His confidence has not paid off, at least not in the way we expected. We like Palm Sunday. This is where we hope our journey leads us. Glory, validation, acclaim, 
But Jesus knew all along that Palm Sunday was not the destination. It reminds me to the words of a song. My child arrived just the other day. He came to the world in the usual way. But there were planes to catch, there were bills to pay, and he learned to walk while I was away. He was talking before he knew it, and as he grew, he'd say, I'm going to be like you, Dad. I know I'm going to be like you. And the cats in the cradle and the silver spoon, the little boy blue and the man in the moon, when you coming home, Dad, I don't know when, but we'll be together then. You know we'll have a good time then. When my son turned 10 just the other day, he said, thanks for the ball, Dad. Come on, let's play. Can you teach me to throw? I said, not today. I got a lot to do, and he said, that's okay. But he walked away, his smile never dimmed. It said, I'm going to be like him. Yeah, you know I'm going to be like him. Well, he came home from college just the other day, such like a man, I just had to say, son, I'm proud of you. Can you sit for a while? He shook his head and he said with a smile, what I'd really like, Dad, is to borrow the car keys. See you later. Can I have them, please? I've long since retired and my son's moved away. I called him up just the other day. I said, I'd like to see you if you don't mind. He said, I'd love to, Dad, if I could find the time. You see, my new job's a hassle, and the kids have the flu, but it's sure nice talking to you, Dad. It's sure been nice talking to you. And as I hung up the phone, it occurred to me, he'd grown up just like me. My boy was just like me. When you come home, son, I don't know when, but we'll get together then, Dad. You know we'll have a good time then. The truth is, some of us do get our Palm Sunday moment. But Palm Sunday is always fleeting. You can't hold on to it. And the price that you paid to gain it will come due as the psalmist has said, all flesh is as grass. None of us is getting out of here alive. None of us can avoid the cross. And if we don't know this, we don't know who we are. And we don't know where, where we are going. We don't know why we are here. This is why Christ has gone ahead of us. This is the most human of all the things Jesus will do. Face death. But unlike us, unlike me, he knew this, that this was his path from the beginning. And because he goes, the cross will not have the last word.